Here are your Dragonflight slash War Within reminders for this week. Hey, it's Sol, and you can help support the channel by liking this video, subscribing for more WoW updates, and catching me live in the mornings on Twitch for some coffee with Sol, that's me. We learned just yesterday that the War Within expansion will go live worldwide August 26th, maybe the 22nd if you're interested in the early access period, but let's also work backwards to get a glimpse of what's to come. The mob remix will only have ended the week before on the 19th. Uh, somehow I doubt the pre-patch will come as late as the 20th because that's only going to give us like a week for the pre-patch event, including getting some gear upgrades for our remix characters. So I'm going to hold out hope that the pre-expansion patch will launch sometime between like late July and early August. This kind of lines up with the fact that the PTR for this patch is selectable on the WoW launcher now. It sort of tells me that it'll open up maybe this week, but there's no guarantees of course. If it does though, let's say this PTR is 7 weeks long, which is how long the Dragonflight PTR went, that would mean the pre-patch itself will drop the week of July 30th. However, that would mean a 12 week gap between patch 10.2.7 and this upcoming pre-patch. I guess that makes between the 16th and the 30th of July the kind of safe range of when the patch might release. Of course, we're still going to have a few weeks of the pre-patch to farm, and then one week later, the remix will end with the expansion a few days or maybe up to a week after that. So a schedule like this sounds pretty good, give or take exactly how long the testing period is. Now, the reason why I'm taking such a close look at this is because of my plan to farm up old content about 30 days ahead of the pre-patch, where I'm going to amass tons and tons of transmog in the mailbox to unlock the first day of the pre-patch. This will mean the timing will be very, very important, because if I'm off, it'll mean that I'd have to pick up mail that is about to expire to ensure that I don't lose any. I should also let you know that this plan of mine is only like 99% confirmed to even work. Characters transferred to the PTR or the beta, they don't keep anything in their mail, making it impossible to test and verify that this method of unlocking transmog is going to work. Still though, this is exciting, and we have to go over what to consider doing before the pre-patch and expansion launch, and if there are more tips that you'd consider, definitely share them in the comments. A couple things to complete are the usual accomplishments that go away at the end of a season. We're talking about Gladiator and the Keystone Master and Hero achievements. We're talking Portals and the Awakened Raid achievements, which means defeating every raid boss, not just the raid, but the raid boss on normal and higher difficulty. This way you'll get a mount, a title, and raid teleports depending on the difficulty. The Awakened rotation isn't going to end until the pre-patch, which some may find disappointing, but in a twist, one can still earn the Ahead of the Curve mount appearance from defeating Farrakh on heroic difficulty. Your best bet is to wait until Emirgisil is not awakened, for example, like this week, and get in a quick kill. Communities like Perky Pugs make it their mission to help people out by providing these sorts of carries, so I'll provide a link to their Discord channel in the video description. Completing your milestones for the remix may also be important depending on your goals. It's a source for both lots of transmog and raising an army of alts and this comes to an end August 19th. I would advise that if you're in a good mood and you happen to be very very powerful, hey lend a helping hand to our fellow collectors and levelers and host a round of raids to help them get started. It really doesn't take long to get through the first few raids and you'll be making people's day while hopefully getting weapon mugs for yourself because the drop rate is super unforgiving, thanks Blizzard. One class you may want to pay attention to are Evokers. After the pre-patch, Evokers are going to start at a much lower level, and thus will take longer to level than they do now in Dragonflight. So I'm just saying, if you don't have one already, have one level to 70 to save a bit of time. And then maybe you want to consider doing a little or a lot of house cleaning and farming for your characters. Now here's what I mean. The War Within pre-patch will give us Warbands, and with that, a Warband Bank, or a Warbank is what they should be really called. Anyway, it's a shared bank with 90 slots per tab, you get 5 tabs at max, meaning that while you can use it as just another bank to toss your extra garbage, I say that it would be best used for items that are in fact shared across your account and used on a regular basis. So I'm talking about trade goods that characters of different professions are going to use. I'm talking about bind on equipment gear and later, warbound gear that you're holding onto for alts. Shared currencies like pet tokens, that applies here too, so what you can start doing is taking stock of your character's inventories and start sorting stuff out. Should a bunch of these Dragonflight mats go into the bank, or can they all be consolidated on a single character for now, because maybe you won't be touching them until they're needed. You might be surprised over how little of the war bank you actually use, at least until you start cramming it with the war within materials that you won't know what to do with at first. 
And then there's farming, which is closely related to transmog unlocks that I mentioned earlier. Shadowlands appearances bought from renowned quartermasters can be bought and unlocked by any single character after the patch. If you've got the spare time and desire for appearances, it's been the time to farm up anima and grateful offerings so you can unlock even more stuff later. Now, I would consider this to be a low priority farm because that's not going anywhere. Meanwhile, the Mr. Pandaria remix is. What I don't want you to stress over too much is having to gear up and trying to have your characters feel quote, prepared for the new continent. Outdoor questing is only tuned to be as difficult as if you just finished chromie time from a previous expansion, so item level requirements are like in the 350s or so. Meanwhile, the characters from the remix are expected to have an item level in the 420s, catch-up gear from the pre-patch event will be in the 480s, so you want to prep for the right reasons, as in go for permanent gains from like transmog and leveling and logistics with organizing your inventories. Investing your time in that direction, it'll pay off much better in the long run. And let's take a look at what's happening this week. It's the Battleground bonus event, with the Brawl being one of my favorites, Shadowpan Showdown. I mentioned earlier that the Awaken rotation will resume as normal, so this week we return to Abris, pick up the weekly and open the Suffusion chest in the Farrakh Assault area, which should be in the Azure span this week, be a part of the Research Under Fire event, and do a time rift for big gains. It's not a full Spark week, but it's a full Bullion week, meaning people who've been buying gear will have the two Bullion needed for another piece. Meanwhile, folks like me who have all the Bullion gear that we want, I guess now we can buy Mythic appearances with them, giving me a little something to do still. And over in Mythic Plus World, the affixes are fortified and incorporeal, with Sanguine for 10s and higher. Well, I am trying to psych myself back in for the sake of getting Keystone Master because I've been slacking off, but incorporeal, it's not the worst. It just sucks that my turn evil and repentance, which would work really well here, they have a cast time, meaning that as a tank, I'm getting decked in the face while helping with crowd control. I should also point out that this week, the Aspect Crest Cap, it hits a milestone to where you can upgrade every piece of gear to max myth level and still not run out of aspects. The cap is, it's virtually gone, so if you have any spare crests from lower difficulties that you can trade up, you ought to do so. The beta is on a much more stable condition than it was in its first few days, and the, hey, that's great. It's giving players almost free run of outdoor content and leveling. I'm starting to take down some notes on professions so I can start whipping together some guides and feedback for the team, so stay tuned for coverage on that as well. There's also a non-zero chance that the pre-patch may start up this week. It might be a bit ahead of the beta, seeing as how the pre-patch events will hit us first, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of how it works. You can join me here on the channel or live on stream. I'm on in the mornings, and it's always fun to answer questions or, you know, have a chat. So thanks for coming. Like this video, subscribe for more stuff, and let's have Bob close us out. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy. Wasted by life, it's obsession. I'm grinding reputation, I will be denied. Hit that 25 and I'll be famous. Contract spent, I can't slow down Rep is who I am, can't do anything else So don't hold me back, need that gear I need that bomb, I need that pet So I'm gonna make soup, then I'm gonna world boss Then I'm gonna farm more then I'm gonna not work by for now to go up. Then I'm gonna dig holes. Then I'm gonna dig holes. Then I'm gonna dig holes. Done.